Oh, you see that? The recording is in progress, it says. Okay, it's, but somehow, uh, whenever I go to that, it says that, and I think it wants everybody to know that you're being recorded. You're also being broadcast out over the, uh, out over the internet. Anyway, uh, hi, everybody. I'm a little sorry uh, if I sound weird today. Uh, I, uh, I caught what I thought for a couple of days has been a cold, a hellacious cold. And then yesterday started to kind of go away towards the end of the day. And I woke up this morning and I had it all over again. And I think what I have isn't, uh, isn't a cold because Marjorie didn't get it. Okay. Uh, and uh, if anybody was going to get a cold of mine, it would be Marjorie uh, because I, I blow my breath in her face while she's sleeping. Anyway, so I, uh, I think it may just be really bad allergies. Uh, ragweed is very heavy right now. But I, you know, sometimes you can't tell the difference between a cold and, and this. And I'm telling you, I mean, I had a little sore throat and everything. And I thought it was a cold. And now I'm beginning to believe because a cold comes and then it starts to go. This thing just keeps hit me in the face. So. I know it's not COVID. I've taken my temperature 8,000 times to prove that to myself. And uh, also here, look at that. Look at that. Oh, wait a I'll talk about that in a second. Let me, let me bring uh, everybody in here to our little gathering. Rick Sheckman's with us. And Steve Bender is with us. And uh, uh, Mike Chisholm is with us. And Edward Berger and Charlie Wallace. And Andrew Deutsch, oh, we're off to a really good, oh, and wait a minute, hold on a second, I got to let in somebody who looks like it's my wife. Okay, there we go. There she goes. Okay. So I will suck on lozenges through the show and uh, hope that I, uh, that I make it through okay. Uh, but no, but I got this bandage. You see that? See the bandage there? <laughs> I went down, I've been having arthritis in this hand. So I went and I got one of these uh, shots you get, cortisone, and uh, it, it didn't work. So I had to go back and get it again. Now, this is the one shot I don't like getting because this is the one shot that really hurts. Oh, Alex, stop it. <laughs> oh, you know something? You're <laughs> always complaining about your health. Every minute of every day, it's all oh, my back, all oh, my this, all oh, my that. I'd like then, to. then when I say something's wrong, you go, well, yeah, but that's just your imagination. He had a shot in his hand. No big deal. Have you had that shot? That's painful. Yes. It's very painful. Uh, anybody, anybody here uh, other than me had cortisone shots in there? Am I right, Steve? Does it hurt like hell? No, it's not that bad. Oh, shut up. Thank you. <laughs> I was rest to, my case. I was finally supposed to have lunch yesterday, and I woke up and I said, "No way, I'm going to even be able to get myself out of bed." Yeah, he stood me up. Yeah, oh, me up. You, you can hear this, and it, I think it's allergies, though, because Marjorie, look, she doesn't have it, and she sleeps in that very bed next to me, resenting every moment of it. But she sleeps in that bed every night. It's allergies, Alex. I think it is allergies, absolutely. Uh, anyway, uh, hello, Shecky. How you doing? I'm fine, Ben. No problems. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, uh, I'm you, heading to the city in about two hours. You're going to the city? What for? Uh, Vince Giordano is playing at Bond 45 tonight. Vince Giordano. Explain him to people. Vince Giordano does all the Martin Scorsese scores for those mini series he does in the 20s and 30s okay okay yeah and he plays music from the 20s and 30s oh and he hasn't played since march of god i've lost 2019 yeah. is that yeah well it sounds or 2020 to me, yeah it sounds to me like you're gonna be in uh, uh in, that sounds great like it's where's great? he performing yeah. where are they performing spawn 45 which is in the basement of the Edison Hotel. Wow. 45th near Broadway? Is that near Broadway? 46th 46 between Broadway and 8th. Yeah. yeah. So he hasn't... Uh, Great. He hasn't, well, so this is, a, this is a comeback show then. Well, because he couldn't 
do a show for the last right. 19 months. Right. COVID. Yeah. Uh, but and I was scheduled to go the week they shut down. So I'm going the night they start back up. Oh, good for you. That'll should be, be nice, great. Should be Do a it. nice night. Should well, be it's night. sold out. So it's going to be a good night. Yeah. yeah. And, did you uh, get on your own check here? Did you know somebody who uh, slipped it to you? What? Did you did you get tickets like from from the uh, will call or? No, I just called up and made a reservation. Right on. He buys tickets. Yeah, I've never actually. I don't think I've ever gotten a freebie except the Emmys, but then Dave paid for it. Yeah, yeah. By the way, did anybody watch the Emmys last night? Uh, no. Was, Why would anybody do? You know, it is amazing to me that the people who make television can't do it. <laughs> you know, I mean, it was maybe one of the worst shows i've ever seen as an award show somebody wrote an article saying award shows are becoming less and less popular and this is one of the reasons why did you but what i like today not that i watched it people are now complaining because nobody of no minorities won emmys wait a minute let me explain oh, something said, to you let me explain to, let me explain something to you that i noticed last night and i was going to put it up as a facebook post and then i figured you know, who knows, I might one day get the job of uh, being the boss over at Jeopardy, and I don't want to lose my job. Uh, but what I was going to write was the following, and it's true. Last night, in a desire for inclusivity, CBS made sure that almost every presenter was white, I uh, was black, rather, and that the whole night was nothing but black presenters giving the awards to white people. And then That's in the their uh... idea of inclusivity. The In Memoriam segment, there was some fellow who's a rapper whose name I just can't think of right now. Right. He was in the In Memoriam segment, and I wouldn't recognize the poor man had he walked in this room. But they left out, oh, Johnny Crawford, Norman Lloyd, you know, people who I, I had... Was, I'm trying to remember. Norman Lloyd wasn't in, in there. No. no. But this definitely... fellow whose name I just can't think of right this moment who died in his early 50s, who was a rap singer. Oh, he was in it. He had nothing to do with television. Yeah, but no, you're right. Norman Lloyd did not get listed last night. Norman Lloyd was the oldest man, or the oldest oldest person in SAG, mm. and, or sag after. And so far as, well, he didn't have anything to do with television. Well, yes, he did. He produced almost all the Alfred Hitchcock Presents. Mm. Not bad. <laughs> and St. Elsewhere, of course. He was on St. Elsewhere. He was one of the stars. But yeah, we were too busy. They were too and busy. And apparently, like when Ed Asner was being shown on the screen, they cut to the wide shot to whoever was playing yeah, the music. He, he, he should have gotten the, he should have been the last one, by the way. Who, you know? Ed Asner? But who do they make the last one? Norm MacDonald, I think. I don't know. I again, I didn't watch it, so I have no idea. Yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway, you know, but you're right. They didn't. They didn't. What? Holy shit! That was that gutted me about Norm Macdonald. I was going to ask one of the things. You ever work with him, Alex? No. Is he on your no. Uh, no. Great comic, but sorry, that's all I no, can no, say. You, know, you want to hear hypocrisy? Last night, Saturday Night Live wins the award for something. And then someone complains that that black women's show didn't win. Well, forget that. It sucks. But anyway, uh, uh, Saturday Night Live shouldn't win either because it sucks. So if you're going to say one sucks, then maybe give it to the black people. I don't know. Anyway, here's, here's the point. Last night, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Lauren. Lauren Michaels gets up and gives the acceptance speech, which is oh, and Norm's is, dead. Is, Thank is, you. No, is written for him, for him, and he's reading it very poorly. And the last line is, "And we're going to miss the passing of our dear compatriot, uh, Norm Macdonald." What did McDonald. what did Lauren Michaels do to uh, Norm Macdonald? Fire. I fired him Lauren. from Saturday Night Live. That it was, other not, it was, not, it was not Olmeyer. It was not Olmeyer who fired him. Okay, but, fired but, him? But, but Lauren had enough juice. He, right. he chose to. He well, could have said, go blank yourself. I, you know, Olmeyer, Olmeyer was buds with 
OJ. With OJ. And, and Norm was doing OJ jokes. <laughs> nah, nah. But then, and then they had him back to host a year after they fired him. I can't do justice to it, but today I was... Norm McDonald's all over YouTube right now. Yeah. You know, and they said, Norm McDonald tells the moth joke. That moth joke is something. You hear the moth joke? It was great. I could not do it justice by doing it here. No. What it is, it's kind of like uh, Penn Jillette's bear joke, where it's a a whole buildup, all right? Of, of one thing and another and another and another and another and then you get to the punchline and it's very simple but it's it's the whole story leading up to it and you're expecting some kind of final conclusion and, you can't, and it goes on and on and on it goes on and on the way he tells it is just yeah. I mean, it's, it's his delivery I, it's so sad i have tickets to see him like next week at the new really? york and oh, new york wow. festival he was going to be at Caroline's for like four nights at the New York Comedy Festival. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. You know, he was dying for 10 years. Yeah, he didn't tell anybody. Uh, he didn't tell anybody, even his best friend. But didn't. isn't that the way it's supposed to be? That's what... Uh, uh, yes, was it? thank you, Shakti. Yep. Uh, there was a, some interview I saw with somebody. Oh, it was with Bill Maher, who said, that's real class. He said he didn't go around telling everybody he was dying. When he finally died, everybody found out. Yeah. You know? He said, I'm sick of people who are constantly going, well, I, uh, I'm, I'm fighting, I'm battling cancer right now. You know, he said, if you die, you die, you know, and now, now we know he had it for 10 years and he had. Well, he it's had- like, and not that I've ever watched her, that Wendy Williams, if I have to read one more story about her and her illnesses. Yes. Yes. In fact, doesn't she have COVID now? Uh, who knows? Yeah, and look, I hope now. she's. Oh, I hope she'll be fine, whatever her problems are. But I don't need to. Do read you it really hope anything. she'll be fine? Do you really hope she'll be fine, Jackie? Well, yeah, I'm being nice. <laughs> yeah, okay. Because right. I don't want anyone to. Right. Right. Yes. Uh, yes, Mike. I. I. Uh, I'm a pretty. Uh, I'm an enthusiast of Norm Macdonald, and it's. And I've been watching a lot of stuff this last week because it. It's it's weird processing this uh, from the perspective of a of a, of, of a fan, <clears throat> um, and 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 so a lot of the stuff that he's done in the last ten years, he has talked with guests, whether it's guests on his Netflix show or whatever. He talked to them about death. He's talked a lot about death mm-hmm. these last ten years, and through the lens of knowing that he had cancer and was also losing the battle with it. Um, it's fascinating listening to him talk to Jane Fonda, for example, on his show, talking to her about death or talking to yeah, someone who's yeah, like, oh, yeah. very interesting. So now you can make the connection. Yeah. 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 Right. Well, Lynn LaFrisco is joining us. Uh, hello. Well, Ben, ben it's like your friend, and I, I'm going up on the name again. You know, the one who died about 30, at 35, who was Bill Hicks? Adam Letterman. You know, what's his name? Bill Hicks. Bill, Bill Hicks. Hicks. Bill Hicks. Yeah. yeah. He didn't tell anyone he was incredibly no, ill. He, when I saw him, and he he had already gotten the news that he had uh, pancreatic cancer, okay. uh, I, I, I said to him, he says, I'm, I saw him in the back room at the punchline. And we were talking, he says, I'm, you know, I'm quitting the business. I said, what? He says, yeah, I decided to quit comedy. I went, well, why? And he said, no, I just decided to, you know. I don't want to do it anymore. And what he was doing was he was just bowing out because he was going off to die. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, but he never made, in my mind, a big, i sorry. He never made a, a public deal never, about. No, you, he never told anybody, hey, I'm dying. Oh. Or did Andy Kaufman, maybe I'm, uh, yeah, no, I remember this, Kaufman, I don't think he ever Andy, said something like well, that Kaufman, either. Kaufman, Kaufman, um, um, no, Kau- uh, 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 my old friend, uh, uh, what was his name? The fat comic who's dead now. Uh, or Monty or... Hoffman. Oh, Sam Kinnon. No, Monty Hoffman. Saw him outside the. Uh, saw him outside of the uh, other cafe in New- in San Francisco, and he says, "Oh, uh, you know, what are you doing in town?" He said, "I just came to San Francisco to be here." Yeah, and he said, "Well, what's new?" He says, "I'm dying of cancer." Mm. <laughs> Yeah, but that's part of Andy's act. When Andy says that, you probably just think he's goofing on you. He says, I'm I'm dying of cancer. And uh, he said, really? 
He said, yeah. He says, I keep getting that reaction. Everybody thinks I'm kidding. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> believes I'm dying. It's joke. Well, it's like when he did die, Morty was at the funeral. And I'm like, Bob, did you see him in the coffin? <laughs> yeah. Because we didn't oh, yeah. believe it. <laughs> yeah. Right. And then, you know, and they, you know, he's Pete. I mean, I think he would have loved that, actually. In his last Rolling Stone interview, he talked about how his goal was to die, be doing his act, and do something like tightrope walk. Like, in other words, he did his act. Yeah, Yeah. because nobody Um, still believes he's dead. You know, I'm waiting for him to show up. Well, I'm trying to remember. And then then they did things like, what was the name of his alter ego? Tony Clifton. Clifton. Yeah, Bob Zamuda. Where Zamuda would would play him, and you you would think it's that Andy, it's that Bob Zamuda, and he's still going. Sometimes he would do... Um, right, to, to Tony. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I, I was at Carnegie Hall. Have somebody else do it. So. I was at that Carnegie Hall show when Kaufman took the whole audience for milk and cookies and school buses after the show. Oh. <laughs> oh, awesome! And then he also said, "You know, see me tomorrow. If you want to see more, come on the the, the Staten Island ferry the next day." And I didn't go, but people did, and he was there, and he did his show on the Staten Island ferry. Oh. Wow. I mean, he and, was, people, oh, and people wow. are still waiting for him to show up one right. day. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Even though he's been gone Long since, time. I think, 85, maybe? 30, yeah, 30, 40 years. Who's the actor that played Hitler and the producers? Uh, Big Sean. Sean, uh, 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 Sean played the Hitler part. Yeah, Sean. Uh, what's the first name again? Big Sean. He died on stage in the castle. Oh, Richard, yeah. 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 What and nobody was, knew. What, he no. had a heart attack on stage. That's and right. everyone thought it was part of his act. Except for his family, who were in the audience. People, oh people were. Oh, gonna, really? Yeah, they freaked oh. out. They knew it wasn't the act. <laughs> well, the, what happened was, is he he had this heart attack on stage, and everybody went, uh, "Oh, that's hilarious! Uh-huh. And that's really..." And and they he maybe he might have survived if somebody had gone to help him. <laughs> nobody went to help him because nobody believed he was having a heart attack. I think I had read that he was doing it. This could be apocryphal, but that he was doing a bit about the end of the world. And that's it was something like why that. when he went too far, <laughs> people you know, didn't think it was, you know, they thought it was part of the act. Yeah. Well, I have never made, uh, I've never made uh, a joke out of me dying because I want you to know if I have a heart attack here on the show, it's for real. <laughs> Call nine one one. Yeah. Everybody will hear will have sympathy except for Marjorie will go out. Well, should be watching about your health again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'll be our reaction. Okay, Marjorie, um, what do you want us to do? Yeah. <laughs> At that point. Andrew Deutsch has had some trouble getting on today, haven't you, Andrew? Mm-hmm. Oh no, I'm just causing my own trouble. So no. as long as you don't have trouble getting off, then that's all right. You know, that's what's important. That's- <laughs> and I would be like, oh crap, I gotta go to a funeral. Right. <laughs> but then, hold on a second. You're in your kitchen, right? Who, me? Yeah. Yeah. Go to your kitchen cabinets where you keep some food. <laughs> yeah. And okay. let's, let's see what you have in there. Oh, geez. <laughs> let's see what we got. Come on. It's not like I'm not asking you to go to the bathroom and find condoms or anything. Let's see, <laughs> let's see what we got in the drawer here. Here's the drawer of all, all my crap. Wow. Oh, okay. What is, uh, so is, okay. There, is there peanut butter? I saw peanut butter. Peanut butter right? here, here you go. You want some pork skins? Ooh, Ooh yeah. Kosher. Good luck. That looks like it's old time fat back. Yeah. Like, wow. like mama's pan fried. <laughs> uh, pita oh. chips, Aussie bites. These are all low carb uh, chips, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> I know, I've I know got a bunch of my wife's stuff. In here, yeah. You want, I got some fish skins for the dog. You want one of those? No. <laughs> uh, uh, let me see here. So anyway, okay. I just want to know. I'm just getting. I saw you going through the kitchen, and I always like to look. Well, let's go to your bathroom. Let's look in your medical <laughs> backyard. Yeah, go up to your bathroom. Here's, Where's here's your the living bathroom? room and the law. Uh-huh. Okay, we're going to the bathroom. It's a pretty, oh, pretty house. Bathroom, nice. Bathroom. Nice. Nice house. Very nice, nice house. Nice house. Very nice house. Yeah. Hold on, it's in the I'm in the West Wing now. <laughs> wow. Here's here's the bathroom. Okay, now go to your medicine oh, cabinet. Let's see what you have in there. You want to see my antifungal? <laughs> <laughs> Move the camera in so we can see what's in there. Oh, come on. 
Yeah, let, let's see. Here's proof. I do use. Hey, let's see your prescriptions and everything, huh? Wait, wait, wait. wait yes, total. Yeah, <laughs> real. <laughs> well, we know he's not full of shit, so that's good. <laughs> yep. Hey, wait. There's there's a shower. Oh, okay. Well, nice. why you, while we're on, why don't you take a shower? <laughs> the bathroom's bigger than my apartment. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, I, actually, I, I've got it showing we're selling the house. So I'm, I'm home early setting it up for sale. Here's the, what are you selling? Here's where the, here's where the magic happened. What, what are you selling? Are you making a down payment on the Taj Mahal? Let's see here. How many, wait, wait, how, wait. Many, how many square feet is that house? Um, the living space is about 5,000. And then no. you add my, my shop, the basement, the garages. It's about eight. Oh, Lord. That's a nice size house. And it's, and it's probably half yeah. the price. It's probably a third of the price of my house. <laughs> yeah. My upstairs. Oh, that's nice up there. Yeah. I built all this myself. Really? Wow. Yeah. I'm here for loft space. Did I you love build loft it space. yourself or did you design it? I have both. I, I I hired contractors for stuff that was too heavy for me, but all the built-ins, like here, this this built-in here with the amethyst piece, I did all the kitchen cabinets. I built myself. I wow! Like, wow! Yeah. I'm impressed. <laughs> You're talented. Yeah, I built all that. Wow! Yeah. Wow! Jeez! Wow. My house. Huh? Good price. <laughs> yeah, how We're downsizing. Where so are you moving to? Here you go, Mr. Mr. Radio. Look at this. Can you see this? Oh, cathedral. 1932 Silvertone. I found it for twelve dollars oh. and completely rebuilt it, tubes and all. Oh. Cool. My grandmother had one of those. A back yeah. in California in storage, I have a cathedral right here, one of the desktop cathedrals. Mm -hmm. Here's my here's my Edison that I got and completely rebuilt. Wow. I have I've got the screen for the front. I haven't put it back on. Wow. Mm -hmm. I got I got that at a at an auction for I think twenty dollars and brought it back to original form. Wow. You are talented. Yes. Yeah. I mean, if I tried to build anything, I'd have more bandages on my thumbs from hitting the <laughs> hammer. You're assuming I still have thumbs. Oh, <laughs> although Marjorie has to admit, I have come up with solutions in this apartment. Yes, he's a solution man, absolutely. Like we All found right. that we found when we moved in, when you open up a closet, it was completely dark in the closets. And, and these could, are deep closets; these are walk-in closets. Yeah. Wow. So uh, I decided, what the hell? Uh, I'll figure out a way. And so I got some of these lights that you buy for like outside. Mm -hmm. or if you motion detected sure in all the mm -hmm. closets and uh now every time you open the door to the closet it lights light great so and the buzzer how about the buzzer alex oh well, the thing is the the door buzzer is in the kitchen and if we're in the bedroom because mm -hmm. of the thick walls and everything you can't hear it mm. so i solved that with a uh a, a, a baby, baby monitor, monitor. <laughs> and so tell me, uh, Alex, the technology you put in the closets, does it involve clapping on and clapping off? No, it, but it, it's, it's a similar technology. It's motion. <laughs> yeah, for me, yes. I'm a clapper. That's a, which is a whole different thing than the oh, clap. No, Alex, you're not supposed to clap for that. You're supposed that to say, I've fallen down and I can't get up. <laughs> Anyway, oh. uh, did you what? did you guys go to to lunch this weekend or whatever? Or well, we were supposed to, and then I got sick. I oh. I, I, I tell you, I could when I I could barely get out of bed yesterday, Steve, and I felt so bad about it because oh. we were planning this for weeks. Yeah, no, it was such a nice day, and uh, yeah, you know, well, the nice jazz brunch. We'll do it again. We'll do it. Again. Mm. I figure if I if I if I did do it. I would be so unsociable because of the way I was feeling. Yeah. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to enjoy no, myself. No, better to rest up, sure. We'll do it. And by the end of the day, I was feeling better. And then this morning, I wake up, I'm feeling crappy again. Mm. So allergies, Alex. And it's so not cold. We're, we're, I got allergies, too. Yeah. It's so bad here. Where could, 
where could you possibly get a cold from? You don't go anywhere. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm trying to do. And plus, if it were a cold, she'd have it by now. You probably. Because she gets cold at the drop of a hat, you know. I mean, but allergies have been so bad this year. Mm, yeah. So uh you know, I mean I just I'm I'm tired of it though. I mean, give me something to stop this. You know, and then of course, what do you take to stop uh, allergies? Benadryl. What right. happens when you take Benadryl? Good night. Good night. Lights <laughs> out. Yeah. But I have the I have this non-drowsy uh allergy medicine, which I take, and that's great, except that it doesn't work. <laughs> no, you know. Well, you should try if you want to try a Benadryl that works. Get that, uh, there's one that's made by the Cosby Corporation. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, let me see here. Is that uh, in the form of a Jello gummy or something, or what? <laughs> oh, what, I, uh, what, what yeah, what? It's, it, it's made with real pudding. Walter, yeah. I do this. Where is it? Where is it? Come here. Come here. I just do this by feeling. This is uh, Allerflow. Uh, you know what this is? This is the, the brand you get. It's Kirkland, and you get it at Costco. You get five bottles for $25. This is the same identical, and you can tell about the smell and everything, <clears throat> as Flonase. One yeah, bottle of Flonase will cost you $35. Yeah. By the way, I didn't tell Marjorie this. I had to go down to the doctor. So I took a, a lift because it's kind of hard to find a cab in our neighborhood. Mm. It cost me, with tip, about $45. Jesus, Jeez. are you serious? I'm, I'm not kidding. Oh, oh my God. And I got the cheap one. I got the one you got to wait for. And then minutes. I'll, wait, I'll wait 15 minutes for it. And then one minute later, they say the cat, it's downstairs. Right. So I always get the one that's going to take 15 minutes. Anyway, I take a cab home. How much do you think the cab with tip was? $20. 20 dollars so you know i mean lyft's convenient but uber and lyft have gotten absolutely ridiculously expensive <laughs> yes you know and much less reliable you know i've got friends that use lyft a fair amount and uber and they sign up and they said okay i want a lyft and then 15 minutes later it gets canceled on them ah, nobody's oh. coming sorry oh oh really yeah mm. So. Same thing with Via, which and Via used to be great. <laughs> what the call? Used be, Via used to be five dollars for anywhere in Manhattan. What? Yeah, yeah it was unbelievable. Which you car? Know, Via. Via. Yeah. And what's the, the same as Uber and Lyft? You know? But now it costs a fortune, right? <laughs> same as anything yeah. else. Yeah. Yeah. Oh boy. Well, you know, during uh, during COVID, Lyft was pretty reasonable. You know. Uh, it, it didn't get that high, uh, yeah. but I actually got to think for a business manager. Said, what did you spend fifty five dollars on? <laughs> and I went a lift car to get us down to this uh, the 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 bad Van Gogh exhibit. Mm. Uh, by the way, did I tell you, Shecky, we went to the good one. Yeah, I think I told you we went to the good uh, Van Gogh exhibit. Was it awesome? Yeah. 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 It was really good. The other one was I, terrible. I saw it twice. Yeah. Did Shecky <laughs> listen to me? I, didn't, I don't know if you heard me. What? Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, 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 did I tell you we went to that Van Gogh? No, you didn't tell me you went oh. to the other one. Oh, yeah, the other one's terrific. <laughs> Just terrific. Did you go to one of them? Well, I told you. I had a ticket for the good one, and when I finally looked at the ticket, they moved me to the bad one. And I just was like, forget it. I yeah, ain't going. terrible. Are you a good Van Gogh or a bad Van Gogh? <laughs> the difference was, you know what the difference was? Uh, the, uh, what do you call it? Souvenir shop, the gift shop. The gift <laughs> shop on the bad one was huge. It took almost the, uh, uh, the same amount as the rest of the exhibit. The other one, they were like a couple of postcards and things like that, but they had a lot more stuff for you to look at, see, and play with. And get the history and understand the painter. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, but, 
Anyway, so uh, I was just going to, I was saying that last night's Emmys were just pathetic. <laughs> Just pathetic. It isn't about who. Yeah, but you wasted your time watching them. No, we fast forward. Checky, let me ask you this question: What else do I have to do with my fucking? (laughs) Really? Well, aren't British people a minority in the United States? So they won. Okay. (laughs) Well, you know something. Here's another thing that bothered me: Uh, they had like about seven nominees for each category, and. In all of those, three of them were like the crown, and three of them were Ted Ted Lasso, Ted and, Lasso yeah. or whatever. I got news for you. When I used to watch the Emmys, and I may be wrong, a show like for Best Actor, they only got one nomination. Am I right? Pretty much. Now, one show gets for Best Actor gets three nominations. Supporting well, actor. Supporting like actor. Ted Lasso, I think, had four nominations. Yeah. Wow. Have you watched Ted Lasso? It's a good show. Is nothing, it? nothing great, but it's entertaining. Well, why is everybody so? Uh, because, it's, uh, because it's so nice and sweet. Oh, really? I, I tried. I made it through four episodes. And I thought it's the flavor of the year. I watched cool. one. It's just mediocre. Yeah, I wanted to stop after one, Marjorie, but I thought everyone loves this so damn much. What am I missing? Yeah. And go on your I gut don't... feeling. Yeah, I didn't get it. I didn't get Alex, it. Alex, how many times have we watched a movie where, let's say, Rotten Tomatoes gave it a ninety-eight, and we go and go, "This sucks." It's usually, like a Marvel film. And again, Something. Yeah, but movie. why do you again, like again today? I was reading the Marvel fans are up in arms because WandaVision didn't win 55 <laughs> Oscars. Or yeah. WandaVision was a very good show, but it was a very good show. You know, if, if I'm was, like, well, they had 22 nominations, so they should have won A, a B, C, D, yeah, why? You know, The Mandalorian, I think, had more nominations than anybody, didn't they? No, I don't think so. Did they win anything? No. No. Okay. No. Well, what did, no um, they, won, they won like seven like technical awards or whatever. Yeah. Okay. I, didn't, yeah. I didn't watch the show, obviously, but I read a little bit. What did Seth Rogen do? So I've been reading about Seth Rogen going out. Oh, he, he, had a great, he, had a great, he had a great line. I'm trying to remember what it was about. But yeah, we're holding this outdoors. Have you seen? There's a roof on this place. And there's hardly any ventilation and nobody's socially distant. And then he said, No one's wearing a mask. But, but then he said something about this is just the perfect situation for killing. And he named an actor who's really old. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I thought it was a very funny joke. Yeah. So the other thing that happened last night uh, Stephen Colbert won an award. N- not yeah, for, for best election night coverage or whatever. Best election called. night coverage or whatever. Wow. And all his staff comes up on stage, and up there with him is Conan O'Brien. <laughs> just standing there. He's not part of them at all. And he's just standing there like. Did he announce the winners? Was that why he was. No, no. No, no he no. just uh, decided to show up. <laughs> yeah. And I think when they brought out the, you know, the people from the. Uh, who count the, uh, the the awards and so on? The counting firm. He was seen in the audience applauding like crazy. You know. <laughs> well, with no career left, and with Jay getting you bet your life, he's got nothing much to uh, go. Well, the thing is, what happened with uh, with him is that uh, he was nominated this year, and uh, I think it was Kimmel who said, "I hope he wins." He says, "I hope he wins because this is his last chance." He said, I'm never going to win, so I don't, I've gotten used to that, okay? He said, but everybody should vote for Conan. Well, apparently they didn't because once again, and he should win, uh, 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 the John Oliver show won. Yeah. You know, I think it wins every year. Oh, that's what won I mean. a couple of things. And I think somebody, oh, yeah, it was Colbert when he was doing his acceptance. I had to, I had to laugh at this, said, well, the only thing I have to thank God for is that I'm not in the same category with Ted Lasso or John Oliver. <laughs> because they win every year, and the crown wins every year, too. Yeah, yeah. well, that's the way the Emmys work. 
you know, last year, what was the um, the Gene Levy show? You know, whatever. It's it great. Shit's great. Well, that was last year's Ted Lasso. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, I mean, it, it just was a horrible show. Just a horrible show. But again, who cares? I do. Again, I've said I do. Before. It's could my profession. Me, could you tell me the film that won Best Picture last year? Yes, uh, it was. Um, it was anybody. <laughs> anybody? Best it's picture. It's all yours, Alex. Come, come on, best picture. Jesus Christ! Do you? It was the, it was that uh, documentary on Alex Bennett, wasn't it? No. <laughs> you know who won Best Actor? Shecky. I don't know. What? Shecky. What was the? What was the? I really, I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. It's amazing. Last year's Academy Award. I went to that horrible movie with uh, uh, Francis McDermott about people living yeah. oh, in vans. No, that horrible, was... horrible movie. Did Did that that depressing as hell. Did that, Did that win? win? Was that? I, I thought so. Yeah, who yeah. knows? Who's got Google? Google? We're all sitting here going, I think that won. Oh, right. I don't know. Hey, so. Did they have uh, actor actor last night, or was it just one actor award for each category? What no, what it is? It's, it, they would have like best actor in a series, but then they'd say so and so from the crown, so and so from the crown, so and so from the crown, and and up against each other, or did yeah. they? Still... Yes, no, they're up yeah. against each other. So and, I mean, and, I mean and, in the and, old days, I seem to remember that you only got as a show one nomination in each, the most one nomination in each category. I don't know. I, mean, I think the nature. I don't know of, if that was a rule. Right, I, I don't know if it was a rule in the way it happened. Well, yeah. what they're doing now is ridiculous because only like two shows get nominated. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. they're all on cable, by the way. Yeah. Well, there only used to be two. There only used to be two shows on. Now there's two thousand. Oh, shows. some of them aren't even. I mean, the big winners last night aren't even on cable. They're they're apps. Well, well Net Netflix tied the record for most Emmys by a network ever. You know, they, you know like Hamilton won three. Emmys that was supposed to be in theaters. It was not intended as a TV. Movie. Uh, I was going to say that. Yes. The other thing is about uh, Hamilton. I haven't watched Hamilton yet. The well, reason... I saw it. I saw it live. Yeah. And all they did was they filmed it live. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what they stage. did though. What I did watch, and I suggest everybody watch it. They actually took a Broadway show, and I, I decided to take a look at it and see how what, they come from away. Yes, they did a great job. Oh, I saw it on Broadway. So yeah, but I'm I saying see. that I, too, I yeah. almost believe that you get the real Broadway experience with this thing, you know. Although it it is shot with many cameras and so on, it is was very well done and not boring. And I watched it and I thought it was a great show. Just Where a great it? show. But it was also only about a hundred minutes. Not I don't know how long the TV version was. But when Where I saw it on Broadway, it was no more that, than 100 minutes. No, the TV version is an hour and 40 minutes. Where can I see okay. this? On, uh, uh, you can see it on Apple Plus. I don't have that. Mm. Okay, well, I'm sure you can download it from somewhere I'll illegally. I'll find uh, it. Yeah, no, and apparently, it, I haven't seen it, but apparently it's a good production they did. Of now, I don't know how, I, you haven't watched the Hamilton, have you? I saw Hamilton three times yeah. on Broadway. And on off Broadway. What once off Broadway, twice on Broadway, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's the one my brother bought the three thousand dollar tickets. <laughs> How much did you pay for your other ticket? A hundred dollars. <laughs> okay. But anyway, uh, public theater, hundred dollars. Okay. <laughs> do you? Let me ask you this. I'm sure Hamilton is terrific. Okay, well, I guess you just answered my question. <laughs> I enjoyed it. It's very good, is it, but it's it, not it, again. Was it overhyped? Yes. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. But so was the producers, if you remember that 15 years ago. That bullshit. Yeah, but that was a fun show. Yeah. That was a Oh, fun but show. come on. I listen to the soundtrack of Hamilton when I'm writing sometimes. I really like the music a lot. Oh, the music is very good at Hamilton. <clears throat> What's, well, you know, the other, uh, what's the other play that, that he did that we saw out? Uh, in the Heights. In, in, in the, the Heights. Heights. Great. <laughs> Which it's was very good. good. Very good. Yeah. Very, it's similar. And that's on, um, that's on um, 
HBO. Is HBO yeah. Plus, or I don't Max. even know. Max. But I don't know if it's still there or not, whether it had a limited run. And I think that had a limited run. It was off. They... And then, oh, yesterday we watched, oh, God. It, we were going back and forth between two terrible things. We went back and forth between, <laughs> be, when we, we would let the Emmys go for a while, put it on pause, let it go for a while, so we could then zip through the commercial breaks, okay? <laughs> And go back to the other thing we were watching, which was a which horrible, was, which was the Clint Eastwood movie "Cry Macho." Oh God! Is it really that bad? I was thinking about watching it. Yeah, it's, me too. It's, oh. it's, 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 it's got good reviews. It's not. I liked it. Okay, it's oh. it's not bad. It's not good. It's just not that good. And oh, yeah. uh, it, it, he, Clint Eastwood has gotten so old; he now <laughs> looks like Henry Fonda. He does. <laughs> Does he by chance talk to a chair during the movie? <laughs> no, no. I'm not watching it then. He's 91, right? He's yeah. 91. Yeah. Uh, and 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 looks every inch of it. Yeah. You know, I mean, it, it, let's face it, it's probably gonna be close to his last film. All right. Nah, he'll be around <laughs> 10 years from now, still making movies. Well, I, said this, I said this to Marjorie last night. And tell me if I'm right or wrong, Shecky, because you, your, uh, your film history is better than mine. Is that not the oldest person to star in a movie? He's 91, and he stars in this film. I don't know. I mean, I'm, the, I'm not saying, there, of course, there are older people who were like playing secondary roles and so on. And I'm talking the star man. over the title. Yeah, but he he produced and directed the movie, so I'm no, sorry. No, that's fine. That's fine. But still, doesn't that set a record? And he plays a really old guy. So, and, and Marjorie said, well, you know, he's not really doing that great a job at acting. And I said, he never did. <laughs> you know, he was what I like to refer to as a movie star. He's not an actor. He's a movie star. He, you go to see a Clint Eastwood movie because you want to see Clint Eastwood. That's right. Yeah. You know, you don't want to see Meryl Streep playing some immigrant from Europe. Yeah. You know, uh, he plays himself. Yeah, basically. Yeah. But I'll tell you, you know, I was looking today. The new James Bond is going to open in two weeks. It's two hours and 43 minutes. Really? Well, that's about that absurd? It's equivalent to the number of months we've been waiting for it to be released. Well, it's been about two years. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, but is it... Two hours and 43 <laughs> minutes for a James Bond movie? Does it come with I a catheter? Does, does it come with a catheter? <laughs> <laughs> And it's in 3D, it's in IMAX, it's in that weird format, which I have no idea exactly what it is, but they show it on the side of the theater. They show it on the side of the theater? Yeah. yeah. If you go to watch it in some, I forget what they call it, it plays on the side of the house. Well, the screen is the size of the side of the house. It's almost like it's Cinerama, but there's no Cinerama screen. So we're just going to show it on the side of the theater. Was it shot in any of these formats? I don't think so. Because I know that when uh, Christopher Nolan does his pictures, he actually shoots them in IMAX. Yeah, I can't imagine the, um, broc you know, the Broccoli Daughter shot the James Bond film in IMAX. Because they're right. the cheapest people on the face of the earth. Right, right, right. Oh, boy. Well, uh, you know. Uh, I, I, can you wait for it to come to video? I love watching James Bond in a theater, and I always have, but I don't know if I want to invest two hours and 40 minutes watching it no. in a theater. Do you think, do you I'll, think theaters I'll be there. Right. Come in late. Do you think theaters are going to survive COVID? Because I mean, well, people, that Shang Chi did very well. Yeah, yeah. but. People get it got very used to not going to theaters mm -hmm. and got very used to streaming. And they suddenly realized they got a big screen at home and it takes mm -hmm. about the same amount of your view as the screen would in a movie theater. Yeah, like and James by the Bond, way, and I love watching <clears throat> James Bond at the Zinkfeld Theater, which no longer exists. 
And by but, the way, that's where we used to go to see them because yeah. it was the one theater that every other theater you go to, James Bond was opening in that weekend. You couldn't get in. Nobody knew about the Ziegfeld. It was one theater. It was in the one screen, of, one big screen, screen. Yeah, middle of the block somewhere. It was, it was the biggest screen in town for a long time. Oh, yeah. yeah. But that was my secret. You, if you wanted to see a film that you couldn't get into anywhere else and it was playing at the Ziegfeld, you could walk into the Ziegfeld. But I would always go see them at the Ziegfeld. But as I say, I don't know if I want to invest two hours and 40 minutes and the hour to go there and sit there, whatever, you know. Well, I mean, I, I, will, I will have to take... I'll buy the Blu-ray when it comes out in three months. You yeah. know. Well, I mean, well, you and I will probably be able to lay our hands on it before then. I'm not gonna. Yeah. Well, I mean, let's be honest about it. In fact, that's why I think they should start releasing these things on Netflix, on Disney, on all these. And I'll tell you, if they were selling it online for ten, fifteen dollars, I would pay it. Well, mm -hmm. but the, you know, you know, they're going to be selling it for thirty because that's what yeah. Disney does with all its pictures. Uh, that it, you know, they're not going to be doing it that much anymore because you know. Johansson. No, but the broccoli Johansson. ain't going to do that because it's the broccolis, you know. Right. Well, the trouble was also that maybe they would have did they had had they had an outlet, but really there isn't an outlet for Sony Pictures. You know, they do no. own, they do own Epics, but that's not. No, but the broccolis the own the film, so even though it's released through Sony, yeah, it's still a broccoli film. Yeah. And I, I like broccoli too. It's low in carbs, and <laughs> you know, and the and bro, Harry bro, and broccoli was mobbed. You know, he was a mobster. Mm -hmm. But until Bond made him legitimate, yeah. Once a mobster, always a mobster. Once a <laughs> once a mobster, always a mobster. Oh, you don't believe in redemption, do you? Uh. <laughs> Not where the mob's concerned. No, and again, you watch the Roger Moore's where he just sold every inch of that screen for advertising. Oh, yeah, airplanes going through camel ads and things like that. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. Excuse me for uh, doing this, but my eyes are tearing. Next, You week, know, I, I'm one of the reasons why Shang-Chi, like my wife and I, that was the first movie we went to in forever. And we had a phenomenal experience, like to the point where we're like, oh, my God, we missed the theater so much. It was such an amazing thing. We're so happy about it. We're delighted to be going to James Bond on opening night. Like, like, and we got a good home theater set up at home. But man, going to the theater, there's there's nothing like it. Yeah, there's nothing like having that person in back of you kicking the seat, <laughs> chewing the popcorn, and <laughs> yeah, ten bucks for popcorn, the telephone. Phony, yeah. you know, phone butter, like, and um... every second row, right? Because it was every second row because of social distancing. We didn't have any of that stuff, so. We had lots of space. Well, they social distance every every other row. What about the rows that were filled? Were they every other seat? Yeah. They, well, if you were with your pod, you're fine. But then, yeah, they had two seats in between each each pod. I, I this term pod. Who is your pod? Are these are people we used to call your peeps. <laughs> I think you're probably your posse. posse. There's a. There's no social. I, there's no social distancing in the movie theaters here. I've been to a couple movies, and it's just oh, like really. You know, back <laughs> was yeah. Do they, they have for proof of vaccination? Um, you see, one of them did wear masks, and one that was very spotty. So I, I'm not going. How about how about proving vaccination? Yes. Well, one yes. The other one, they were very lax. Well, we went. And we had our third vaccination. So today, I went online to see if I could get my uh, an updated uh, thing uh, with that involvement. Said. Uh, when was your second dose? It didn't ask for my third dose, so I'm just, mm. I'm not going to wait. I'm going to wait on it. I can't remember. What day did we get our, our because I tried to sign in, and it, it didn't recognize me. We No, but we did it on, I think, the 28th of February. We did it on a Thursday. February? Oh, it was it's, the 27th. Not, not, not the, the last. 27. You mean the second dose? The, yeah, the 27th? Yeah. Oh, I put down 28th. That's what the problem is. We're, we're going for our boosters right after this show. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what do you, what do you, what do you, what's your brand? Pfizer. Pfizer. Okay. I'm sitting Why in a booster chair right now. <laughs> our drugstore had both. They had Moderna and Pfizer. What did you say, Andrew? 
I'm sitting in a booster chair. A so. booster chair. Okay. So you see. <laughs> you know something that looks nothing like the house you helped build, by the way. <laughs> uh, it's because I stole the picture. <laughs> I don't even know where this is. It looks like the intercoastal down in Miami. I don't know. I just, I figured it's better than putting my company logo up and doing product placement on your show. I'm not a broccoli. I'm a zucchini. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, let's see here. So uh, uh, otherwise I was thinking about who's a, who, anybody gotten in trouble in the last week during cancel culture time? I don't think anybody's been hit with it lately. A, re a wrestler did. Really? Yeah, there's a wrestler who did. There's a show on cable. I think Vice has it down there. It's called Dark Side of the Ring. It's a documentary show about pro wrestling. Yeah. And the incident that happened in the big leagues, in the WWE, I don't know, like 13, 14 years ago. They had a, it was called The Plane Ride from Hell. And uh, there, was a, there was a wrestler named Ric Flair. Yeah, got, I know Ric Flair. Oh, yeah, I know. Ric Flair. So he got called out for his behavior on that flight. Well, there was a wrestler who was on that flight who defended Ric Flair. Yeah. And because he defended Ric Flair, he got fired. And this is something that happened like de well over a decade ago. It's like more like 15 years ago. And that wrestler got fired from the promotion that he is working for or so indefinitely suspended. This is like the time that I defended uh, Sam Kinison. There you go. In the air. Yeah. And, that. I, and I had the gay community and Glad came down on me. And I said, it, 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 you go after the enemy. Don't come after somebody who's been a friend of yours all these years. You know, I simply gave my opinion that I didn't think that the man that I know, Sam Kinison, is uh, is uh, you know anti-homosexual or anti-gay. That's exactly what he said about Ric Flair. The man I know would never. Yeah, was a and, 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 and uh, ultimately, I uh, they held a meeting with people at the station and myself. And I stood up and I said, you know, you know. I went through the the communist baiting era years ago mm -hmm. under McCarthy, and this is the same exact thing. And I got up and I said, I'm not putting up with this any longer. And I walked out the door and slammed the door shut. Good. Good for you. Though. And within a, within a year or so, we were all very close, glad and so on, because they realized that I was not the enemy. You know, I, you know, and, and <clears throat> I think a lot of these groups have a tendency to alienate people who are actually on their side. And maybe they made a mistake 15 years ago. We all would have in the media because, you know, there was a different set of rules of what was right and what was wrong. And even though you know what's, you should know what's right and wrong, a lot of times the, the, way, the way that's handled, you know, is different from era to era. Well, like, you know, that thing at Carmine's last week, and now some black fellow who's I'm from Black Lives Matter and I'm going to have a protest in front of Carmine's today. I'm sure he's the only guy who showed up. Oh, really? Well, you heard that. You read that story, didn't well, you? No. Yes. Well, look, I, I, so three women from Texas oh, from went Florida, to Carmine Florida. and beat up the hostess because she asked for their vaccination cards. You're kidding. No, and they really are in the face yeah. multiple times. Right, but they're yeah. trying to make it into a and now, you know, this guy from Black Lives Matter is like, how dare they do that to those three lovely black women from <coughs> Texas? They're from Texas, yeah. And I'm gonna be in front of Carmine protesting what they did to those wonderful women. Well, you we're know? holding Rick, we're holding a protest for swollen Trinidadian balls. So, well, that's the other thing. Discrimination oh, against swollen balls. Who yeah. the fuck is that woman? Well, I know who I know who she is. And no, I Nikki Minaj. She, Nikki Minaj. I wouldn't, She's also, my infamous, I wouldn't recognize her if she walked in my room right now. Well, you know, a lot of these people, I'll tell you what you got to do. You want to find out who these people are. Watch TMZ every day. Well, no, you no. watch that piece of shit. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> I think Fox bought. I think Fox, it, Fox it. bought it. And Fox just bought TMZ. This is what we watch at dinner because we don't argue about it. <laughs> it's a, it's insane. It doesn't matter that we don't know who Nicki Minaj is. I couldn't pick her out of a crowd either. But again, I wouldn't but, know if she turned up tonight. This but, Vince Giordano thing. But three hundred million oh, people. Nice. But yeah. there's a million people yeah. follow her Instagram, you know? Yeah. 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 And right. she does, she is an influencer in that respect. Yeah. People are going to yeah. say, well, you know, your balls swell up if you take the, uh, 
here are heard. my nephew's ball swell, swelled up. Oh, okay. I heard. I heard listening to her music makes other appendages shrink. <laughs> I don't know if it's true. It's just a rumor. I saw it on Twitter. Okay, yeah, but then the White House invites her to come for a meeting to discuss it with her. Like she no, they didn't. Important. She says they heard. did. The White House said no, we didn't. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> they offered to have a telephone conversation. Wow, a discussion about her nephew's balls. Yeah. <laughs> well, as you were saying last night on the Emmy, some guy was up for a nomination as a rapper who I never heard of in my life. Or maybe I did hear of him. Maybe I did say to Marjorie, I know who he is. I've heard the name. I've never heard of any of those people. You know. Sorry. And by the way, best host of all time, Cedric the Entertainer. <laughs> now, I don't think he's not a bad actor. And I think there's some things he does in his act that are funny. But boy, last night you could have fooled me. You know, did you watch it at all, Charlie? You nope. like you watch, oh, you didn't watch it. No. Why would he waste his time? And Al Alex, <laughs> when have you ever, when has there ever been a to year where you come on and said, shows that he probably doesn't watch? Right. Right. You know, have you ever in your life said, man, that was those Emmys, that was an amazingly <laughs> great show? <laughs> It, yes. it, it, yeah. Conan O'Brien hosted it. The year Conan O'Brien hosted the Emmys, it was so funny. Really? It was a phenomenal year. I, 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 I trust you're one of the people who finds Conan funny. Back when he was doing late night, it was it was back before the Tonight Show, before any of that. And it was uh many people go back to that performance as the reason why they made the deal with him to say the Tonight Show was yours in five years, is because of on the strength of that performance and it was very i fun. don't think so <laughs> yeah it was very what, what do you know to be the possible truth shecky from the inside they probably just didn't want to lose him from 12 30 so they gave they, him they were afraid he would go to somebody else 100 percent. but one of the reasons why they were saying we can't lose conan is because he was bringing like young viewers to no, yeah, I think nobody was watching the goddamn show. <laughs> <laughs> I know a lot of Gen I saw it for about oh, two I seconds. I turned it Guess off. What? The Emmys There's a lot of folks. Coco. There's a lot of folks here. Oh, okay, in all the years that Conan was on on NBC, I don't think I watched it once. Right, really but a lot of people in Gen X did, and so yeah, that Gen X Gen X doesn't doesn't sell uh, doesn't sell product. It doesn't sell a car. It doesn't sell beer. It doesn't sell James Bond. Hey, you, you can have Gen, you can have nothing but Gen X is watching your show, and yeah. you're not going to find very many advertisers are going to spend money there because they figure, uh, you know, that uh, it, 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 it it's just not worth their money. And that may well be the case, but back then that was the 18 to 35 demo. And even after all the nonsense with him and the yeah, but I never heard in this business, I've never heard the 18 35 year old demo mean like anything. yesterday. I had football on, you know what every commercial was? Yeah, gambling. Yep, yeah. yep, yeah. yeah. DraftKings, FanDuel, yeah. make it rain. Yeah, yeah. Yep. porno line. You know, we're going to give you $300 for your first one dollar bet. And by the right. way, these are oh, that's kind of a, the advertisers. Know, these are advertisers who in the old days would never be allowed to advertise. Right. <laughs> you know, what? A and that may well be, uh, you know, but that being said, when Conan left and he suddenly the next day announced, you know, the, the, the nationwide tour, it's sold out in an instant. Like he does have that's a massive that, that, oh, bullshit. That, that's true. <laughs> that's true. You only have to sell a handful of seats compared to millions of people watching you. Okay. Sure. And that may be the case too, but. But I'm just saying, he does have a massive audience. And what is he doing now? Nothing. He wound up not having a massive audience eventually. Otherwise, he'd still be doing his show over at TBS. I don't know. He, I think, say, I, he didn't get you bet your life. Jay got it. I think his variety show is going to be good. I'm excited for it. What variety show? He's doing. Oh. He, he, he quit his show so he could do the podcast and... Uh, so, because he's got a variety show coming out on HBO Max. Yeah, and he'd rather do that than make how many millions a year doing the TV show? I think he's getting paid quite well to do the variety show, but uh, yeah. yeah. He, podcast. he left to do a podcast. 
Give me a break. Yeah, I left Sirius yeah, I'm gonna do a podcast. I, I left Sirius XM to do this podcast. For the eight of us, right? <laughs> yeah. I, I, I have okay, to admit it now. Against, it was all I got. Against, I figure okay. I, I'll get but myself. But don't tell me this guy is, you know. Yeah, I mean, I I figure I get myself on Sirius XM, and if I was really good, I could yeah. get, a I get a podcast. Yeah. Hey, Alex, <laughs> well, I, I, needed, I wanted to ask you: Have you seen the daytime show with with uh, um, Leno doing "You Bet Your Life"? No, I, I hear it's awful. I Mother of God, that was the tonight. biggest piece of shit I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> oh. Oh my God! He's in the right spot with his car show. He's really it good was, at his, it. Was car show's okay. Terrible. Car show. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Watch, watch it, and you will see how how the mighty have fallen. Yeah, if he yeah. ever was mighty. Hey, listen! <laughs> I just looked, and it's my doing time, that. My time is. Why would he even think of doing something like I, I, that? I don't know. It's terrible. Huh? I don't, Marjorie was just saying, why would he even do that? <laughs> they paid him money. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Hey, listen, I want to thank everybody. First of all, I want to thank uh, uh, our, our, our uh, uh, friend. Uh, uh, oh, God, my mind's so <laughs> One of those guys. Who built his own house. Who was oh, here. Oh, Andrew. 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 Uh, he, because he somehow we lost him again. So I don't know. Anyway, thanks to Shecky. Good having you here, Shecky. Thanks to Mike Chisholm. Always nice having a, a canuck. Uh, call us. <laughs> Edward Berger has not said a word. I'm here for emergencies. <laughs> <laughs> you never know when one will come up. And Charlie Wallace, always a pleasure having you here. Steve Bender, we will do that lunch. Yeah. I don't believe it anymore. I, you know, I don't believe it. But. No, no, I wasn't trying to punk out. I was looking. I asked Marjorie. I was looking forward to it. You know, we will do it. Uh, but we will do it. Uh, we're available next weekend if you are. But if you're not, we'll. Yeah, I don't think we're going to be in town. But we'll, yeah. I'll let you know. You probably decide to get out of town so you wouldn't have to have lunch with me. <laughs> uh, Marjorie, write that down, okay? I'm going to be out of town too next weekend. <laughs> Who are you going with, Steve Bender? Yeah, I'll be in the Alpharetta, uh, Marietta, and Sandy Springs in Georgia. In Georgia. I don't know what I'm doing there, but I'll, I'll be there. Jeff Stein, <laughs> not going anywhere, right? Yeah, I'm always. going to Georgia. Always good having you here. Hey, everybody. Uh, why don't you give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a Wait a minute, wave. wait a minute, what? wait a minute. What? Wait a minute. What? You forgot somebody. Tim Marjorie. Who? <laughs> the best looking lady in the whole team. The upper left side of your screen. Oh, uh, okay. Show them the side of the bed I sleep on. <laughs> or that I'm not going to be able to sleep on tonight unless I thank Marjorie Miller for being here. And she ain't going to make dinner. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Anyway, everybody give a big wave. <laughs> Goodbye. Thank you, Alex. Goodbye. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Okay. Feel better, Alex. Okay. Yeah. I'll try. <laughs> <laughs>